All right, so we just finished off assignment five by creating our refined storyboard. And now I want to show you the differences between using PhotoP and GIFMaker.me to create an animation and storyboard, and instead use Photoshop. So this is a, a drawing I did and worked on compositing different elements. And it just it's composed of a few basic elements. We have the base drawing, which is a lot of grayscale, a lot of detail. We have a multiply layer that darkens the contrast on top. So if we toggle that layer on and off, it just darkens all the shadows a little bit. And I thought that might be nice for animation to make it look a little bit more lively as an illustration. And then I have this extra element, which is just the nostril being warped out. It also brightens a little bit. And that nostril element, these are animation assets. I'll go ahead in Photoshop, just like I would in PhotoP, and a full opacity with a soft edged eraser. I'm just going to erase out some of these hard edges so it transitions a little better because my intention for this nostril is to animate just a little bit of breath from un underneath all the goop on the face. So basically like that, that is breathing. All right, and then of course I have a background color, this strong red color. Now, just to kind of review all the animation basics, I am first going to crop this, and this is in Photoshop, not PhotoP, but you see how similar it is. But the difference is I have what's called a timeline tool. And I get to that in Photoshop by going up to the view options and the window options and clicking on timeline. But the first thing I'm going to do is set my crop ratio to 1 to 1, so it's a square. And then I'm going to compose my full image. into a square. So just grow it a little bit, nudge it up a little bit. And hit return or enter. And now I need to refill that color. So I'm going to say edit fill, very similar to photo P, with a color. Then I, when I get the color selector, I can just choose it right from what I already used. Okay, so now I have a square format. With the square format, I'm going to have rulers turned on. I can use my action key, you know, command for a Mac. R to turn rulers on and off. And unlike Photo P, I can set my rulers under preferences to be inches rather than, than uh, pixels. So I can also go to image size, just like in Photo P, and I can make sure that that square is 8 by 8 inches. And I unchecked uh, the chain link because they were just slightly off, and I want to make sure it's an exact square at a screen resolution, so at 72 pixels per inch. So there we have it. Then I want to use my Move tool and click on the guides, or click on the ruler to bring guides around each side of my square.
All right, now these are all of the animation assets I'm going to use. The background, the, the lighter drawn image, the, the darker kind of line art on top of it, and then the nostril. So instead of building each frame and then saving it as a JPEG to bring into giftmaker.me, I'm going to use this tool in Photoshop called the Timeline tool. And then I'm going to choose Frame Animation. And so this is like a little giftmaker.me program underneath your images. And what I'm going to do is build my first frame just by turning things on and off. So I'm going to keep the red background and I'm going to turn on that image. And then I'm going to turn on the dark opacity and decide how much do I want it. So I'm going to turn it on, but I'm going to turn it on at just 10% opacity. And then maybe to make it a little bit more interesting, I'm going to add a layer style to my dark line work with a gradient overlay. And I can choose a, a black to white gradient, or I can choose like a rainbow gradient. I can choose it in a variety of Of settings and then I can also modify it. So I kind of like that and I want to change its angle a little bit. I'm going to change its scale. So it looks a little more sickly and I can always customize the gradient so I might add a white highlight in there. Now the reason that this is so subtle is because my overall layer is only at 10%. So what would this look like at 100%? It would look like that. Okay. So what else do I want? Well, maybe I want to select just the black lines from this layer. So I'm going to chain, turn off contiguous, use the magic wand just like we've done in past projects. I'm going to duplicate that onto another asset. But this time, because I just selected the black, when I do the fill, it just fills in the line art. Right? Which is very different then the background. So all of these are different aspects that can be turned on and off in different ways. And what's nice is layer styles, layer effects, layer opacity, and whether the layer is turned on or off can all be programmed in this timeline. So I'm going to start it with just this basic image. Then I'm going to make a new frame. And on that new frame, I'm going to go to the extremes of all these things I've added. Maybe actually make this more like Try 36% opacity. So from this to this. And I can always play with that gradient. So if I don't like that purple and I want to change it more to a pink, I can do that easily. That yellow is a little strong and I want to make it more of a peach. I can do that.
I want to warm that up even more. So now I have that frame. Come on. Unfortunately, Photoshop takes quite a bit of processing on the computer, so it's pinwheeling on me. But I have that frame and this frame. Okay, so you can see how lots of things can be turned on and off for each frame. Now, this is what's the beauty of Photoshop is I can program it by selecting both frames. I can program it to build automatic frames for me that transition between them. So what do I want to position? I want to change the opacity and the effects. The position doesn't change, so I can uncheck that. It wouldn't matter. I could check it. It doesn't matter, but it means it won't move anything for me. Okay, now that built five frames in between. And so what is it doing with those five frames? It's slowly transitioning from one to the next. Like that. So building in-betweens is very helpful. And that's unique to Photoshop's timeline tool. You can't do that in gifmaker.me. The other thing that's unique is I can individually set the timing of each panel. Whereas in gifmaker.me, they all have to be the same number of milliseconds. Here I can set this one to 300 milliseconds, you know, 0.3 seconds. I can set all of them to 0.3 seconds, which is my default. But I can each also customize individual ones, right? So if I play that through, I'll play it through forever. So it loops. I can see that transition kind of goes slowly. But if I want to, I can take these middle frames and I can make all of those just 0.1 second. So it kind of stays a little bit longer at the beginning and at the end. Okay, now I can build into each of these frames and add that nostril when I want it, right? So nostrils not on, the nostrils on. Nostrils not on, the nostrils on. And maybe I want to set that nostril to not being normal mode, but being um, lightened mode. And let's see how that looks. Because you can change the blending modes. So that nostril just kind of flickers. Honestly, in a way that's a little strange. So if I ever make a change to a layer in Photoshop, it changes every frame that that layer is turned on in. So if I change. Um, like I erase all the whites in the nostril layer. Then that's going to affect both layers where the nostril appears. So there it looks different, right? And so since I changed it to get rid of the white, now it's going to blend in a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on there, and then turn it off, and turn it off here, and then turn it on. Right. Okay, I want to slow these down. 